Could you give us, again, just a, a foundational breakdown of what inflammation even is? It's another one of those words that everyone hears, but is rarely actually clearly defined for people. So I would love just for a breakdown on, on inflammation, you know, when it can be good and obviously when it can be not good um, and what impact it can have, again, on cognitive function and other facets of performance. Okay. Yeah. So inflammation really refers, it's a broad term that means that any component of the immune system and mostly the cells that comprise the immune system are activated in a way they otherwise would not be usually under conditions of more balance, right? So you have with the innate immune system, you sort of have two branches. You have the innate immune system, which is sort of the very primal part of the immune system, the most basic part of the immune system. And those cells tend to recognize most foreign organisms, foreign chemicals, toxins, and they'll respond to those. So those are your, you have neutrophils, mast cells, um, and often macrophage cells. Those are these immune cells that will basically, if something's wrong, for example, let's say the microbiome's not in good shape, or let's say someone has a mold exposure and there's still some issues with mycotoxin or something, those cells will kind of be recruited and be like, there's a problem here, there's a problem here, there's a problem here. And they, the, that signaling actually results in inflammation. They're more active than they otherwise would be, right? Now, what happens is those cells will sometimes, will signal sometimes when it becomes enough of an issue to what's called the adaptive immune response. And those are your T cells, your B cells, your bigger players that really come in when there's enough of an issue. They're more specific. So the innate immune cells, it would be a little bit of equivalent to an army back, back in the medieval times, right? So you have an army and you sort of have the, the foot soldiers that go first and the archers and they're, they're just trying to target whoever they can. But then at the back, you have the specialized cavalry, right? Well, those are your T cells and B cells that will come in and identify very more, more targeted pathogen threats. For example, a specific virus or a really specific issue. And if those cells come in and that inflammation is, is not resolved either, you're going to get perpetual signaling on the part of those cells and they will remain active as well. So the uh, inflammation could really result from any combination of of those different immune cells. You might have just innate immune activation, you might have some T cells involved, depending on the nature of what's going on, right? Over time though, that can be basically very exhausting for the immune system. Um, you know, you, you don't really need your cells, you don't really want your cells to always be perpetually active, that, that burdens you, that's energetically demanding, right? Um, that being said, you did mention though, you do want these cells to function. So for example, if you get COVID, if you're infected with SARS-CoV-2, you do want a robust inflammatory response in a sense. You want immune cells to come in and recruit it. You want them to recognize the virus. You want them to target the virus. You want B cells and T cells called in, right? So, so there are times when there's actually a problem that you want inflammation in a sense to occur, right? So for example, in some infections, you'll get a fever. And there's actually some thinking that, that a fever within limits should not necessarily always be taken down with Motrin or with other therapeutics because the, the heat from the fever sort of, you know, is almost a part of the reflection of the inflammatory signaling that it actually means your body's kind of heating up to go against the threat in simple terms, right? So you don't always want to stop your immune system if it's, if it's combating something, but there's a, there's a happy medium, right? And you certainly, people have problems when they may have an issue that's not being addressed. For example, their microbiome in the gut is just imbalanced. So you have this perpetual recruitment of inflammatory cells. That's, that's not doing anyone any, then you just have chronic inflammation, right? Long-term inflammation that goes on and on and, and is energetically demanding and detrimental. And depending, you know, when you talk about cognitive function, that can have, there's many routes by that, by which that can affect cognitive function. And, and if we're going to talk about microbiome, one of the most direct routes that that can happen is via the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is a very important nerve that innervates, you know, from the brain, innervates every major trunk organ of the human body. So the gut, the lungs, different body sites. And if it senses inflammation in those body sites, it will convey a pro-inflammatory signal to a region at the back of the brain called the dorsal brainstem. And that can cause on that side of the brain inflammation of the cells there called microglia, which are brain immune cells. 
that can become inflammatory and that if those cells are active, those microglia, you get what's called neuroinflammation. It can also lead to autonomic problems, as we mentioned before, because the brainstem has important nerve bodies that control the ability of a person to move correctly from sitting to a standing position, to not get dizzy when they're moving. So if you have a sort of pro-inflammatory signal from vagus nerve, affecting the brain that way, you can throw off those autonomic signaling pathways as well. And you're, you're starting to see someone who now has central nervous system issues that can contribute to, to problems with function. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.